Yo guys, what up and welcome to another replay analysis. Our boy Muffin is back at it again. And today he's playing against a guy named Unaria, a Terran player, okay? No idea what this game's gonna be about. We're gonna go to his vision, Muffins that is. And we're gonna see what's happening. But it's been a while. I'm gonna see if Muffin's improved. His he's definitely changed his uh, hatchery icon. You can see He's actually fully committed to the name, finally. He's got a love-hearted Muffin on as his icon. And the clan Muffs. <laughs> nice, dude. Well done. That's pretty sick. <laughs> Alright, now let's look at these close patches, Muffin. Okay, well, I don't see this patch being double-stacked. Fucking up already. Okay, and I need you to put two drones on that thing right now. It's a cupcake. That's not what he would tell you. Um. All right. Okay, you did it. I like it. Good job. Okay, so then we have a uh, we have a uh, that was a sixteen hatch, I think. It might have been a seven. I, it, your hatch is fine. I don't care. Your build's fine so far. Uh, also, you're not putting drones. You're not pulling drones off the middle line. You're putting them on gas. I don't mind this if you're going to be defensive. If your plan is to take a fast third, that's fine. I, like, I've, I've told people to do that before as well. It's just more, it is more mineral efficient. And it does make sense if you're not planning on going for any counter ling pressures. Now, let me pause the game here really fast and just say something. If you did, however, let me just, I, this is a, this is a note for every single Zerg player out there. If you're a Zerg player and you go for a fast gas, like gas before pool, and then you rip three drones off get mineral line to make sure you get it saturated as quick as possible, because you want the fastest speed you can get after going for a hatchery, so we're talking like 17 hatch, 18 gas, 17 pool, and you just put three on gas immediately. If you ever see a Terran do this, you could actually, I'm not even kidding, you could actually make like 20 lings. You could start making lings around like 35 to 40% of your speed's completion. So we're talking, we're talking like, um, like 25 seconds or so into Zergling speed. You could start making lings and you could make lings up until about like 60 seconds or like 55 seconds so you could do like what i'm trying to say is you could, you could probably make like 10 to 12 larva of lings like getting a full inject in, invested into it have some automated larva invested into it and you could make about 20 to 24 lings you could run across the map and you could probably kill this guy and what happens is is you would have about again you would have 20 to 24 lings running up his ramp into his Surrounding the bunker, and if you get a full surround of the bunker before SCVs get pulled to repair it, because the bunker is so far away, you uh, guarantee kill that bunker. And if this guy makes a bunker, he's also probably being really greedy. Uh, he actually went double gas, which is crazy. Um, but he did go for an expansion, so there's that. I think he did double gas after he expanded. Like, I imagine he made the bunker because he went gasless expand as an opener. Like, there you go. Boom. Fucking nailed it. That's that's what bunkers usually mean early. It's a gasless expand. Like it's 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 greedy stuff, which is why he's like, I need a bunker. So if you actually were the guy who was prioritizing speed, just but if, if you're not prioritizing speed like Muffin here, then this doesn't apply to you. But if you are prioritizing speed, okay, this is an important note to take here. If you see that bunker like that, you could actually just win the game because you could get such a lead because this is so exposed. Something I, I recommend you do in your own games, you know, if you see an opportunity like this. Like, I would totally do it if I were you in this game, if I had gotten speed as a priority. But you know that speed is not a priority in this game. We can see he's even mined over 100 gas, and he still hasn't even started it yet. Um, speed is definitely not his priority right now, which is fine. I'm not, I'm not saying that you should have prioritized it really early. But one thing I don't like, though, is I don't like your gas being mined still. So we'll, we'll go from there. J just know, though, if you did do that, you would actually just win the game. Like, you would kill so many SCVs for this, and you would kill his bunker. You would kill everything in the bunker. The guy would have to lift his natural. You would not break his main and kill him in the entirely, but you would give yourself such a lead by fucking his natural up that you just run away with the game at that point, and it's really easy to win from there. That's why it's so good, if you ever catch that. So hopefully what I just said makes sense. Again, this is Diamond Plus, so if it didn't make sense and you're like, wait, what the fuck? Rewind that crap. We'll listen to it again, but it is a big deal. Okay, so Muffin, your gas was not prioritized very well. 
You pulled off every drone on gas. This is this is shit you have to not neglect. You pulled off every like I know you're scouting with your overlord and you're getting distracted, but you have to really prioritize. This is actually the priority right now. Like seeing that bunker that already kind of tells you what it is, to a point. Like it tells you that this dude's doing something really greedy. Either and again, greedy doesn't always mean he's making a command center. This could also mean that this dude is actually skipping any type of a scout. He's skipping a reaper. Like, let's actually look at his vision. Did he even scout you? No, he didn't. That's another indicator of a bunker. Like, that this is a legit bunker. Like, he's really committed to it. He doesn't even fucking scout because he's like, I don't want to waste any mining time. And I might need it. Like, or I'm going to need it because I'm playing greedy anyways. But, um, if your opponent does something like this and you see that bunker, one of two things is happening. Number one, he's uh, economically being greedy. Or number two, he is gas being greedy. Like, he's being greedy with tech. Like, he wants to go for, like, I'm going to make a bunker and four marines and a really fast battle cruiser. Uh, the placement of the bunker indicates natural's done. If it was here instead, I would be like, yeah, maybe it's a tech bunker. Also, the placement of his factory indicates uh, natural, bunk natural uh, economy greed, basically. Because this factory is so fucking late. Uh, it just started. And that, you know, that means that this dude is definitely not prioritizing his gas if he just started a factory. So you already know, you should know by seeing this and this, if you really think about it, like the way we just kind of broke it down, that you, you already know there's a natural there. I would love it if you still scouted it. But just seeing the bunker and the factory going down, you could take a moment to go back here and fix your gas early, fix your, start your speed, and then go back here and continue scouting if you wanted to. But I, what you're doing is you're scouting so hard right here, and then you're neglecting this, and you're forgetting about it for too long. And that right there, that's so much time spent mining gas that you're not using, any, that you're not going to use anyways right now. So it's it just hurts you really heavily because, look, at, like your natural could have been saturated a lot faster, basically. And then your third base could go down faster. All these things, minerals. Okay, now seeing this, seeing now that this dude rotated his starport, or uh, sorry, he rotated a barracks to the top side of his base. That is an that to me is an indicator of starport. I'm not even looking at his build yet, but I'm gonna I'm gonna predict what he's doing. This is an indicator of a starport going down. If the barracks leaves and it's like, let's go put it further back in the base. Why the fuck does Terran put the barracks further back in the base? It's because they're probably gonna build an add-on for tech they're trying to hide, which is a starport. It's the only reason why that makes sense. There is absolutely no reason why he needs to make his bar his barracks fly all the way up to the fucking fog area. Spend like 10 seconds going flying over there and then land it. When he could have just been like, barracks, land right here and just make like a tech lab here for a stim pack or a, a reactor for uh, marine production or whatever. Because he doesn't give a shit if you see it, if he's going for that. Like it's, it's not, he's not going to be able to hide stim pack forever. But what he is doing is he's probably building a starport. It makes more sense. If, if, if that's why he moves his barracks like that. It's a tendency of players who try to hide their racks. So him showing you how the barracks just flew away is honestly an indicator that of what he's doing. Um, you getting into his natural and seeing an engineering bay, that's an indicator of going, okay, this guy's got an ng bay really early. I'm thinking that this guy's going to probably make... I would think this guy's probably going to make a cyclone out of this factory if I didn't see the ng bay. But because I see the engineering bay, now that makes me think he might make a siege tank and he's going to make turrets. This is such a fast engineering bay. And this also makes me think he might be the kind of guy who's going to go for a really fast planetary at his third base. So th if I had to guess this guy's build from this point on, with everything we've just seen, starport with a barracks. Barracks is probably going to build like a tech lab or something. Probably a tech lab. Uh, this is going to be for turrets and then eventually planetaries. And then he's going to make a tank and he's going to take a third command center in a little bit. And then let's see it. So he's making a reactor on the barracks. Um, so far. He hasn't spent some money. Let's see what he does. Let it play for a minute. Let's see what he makes out of the factory. I would assume it's going to be a tank because of the engineering bay. It is a tank. And he's making a second factory. So it wasn't a guaranteed starport. It's, it's likely that he's going to make one. But he didn't do it. He just rotated the barracks off to kind of hide it to then make a reactor for another factory, which is fine, which is why it's always a good idea to follow up scouts eventually. 
But this dude is actually turret ringing his base already. Which is crazy. This is a this should be a good feeling for Zerg here. That's so much investment. Uh Forest Foresty Diva, thank you very much for the Formula 3 sub. I don't know if I just said that, but thank you again if I did. I appreciate you uh subbing to the stream. Thank you, man. Much love. So this is what uh, this is what you should be doing right now, uh, Muffin. I like the Roachhorn. You don't know if there's going to be some type of an awkward timing that's going to hit you. And I think the po the potential of having some extra Ravagers in your army, the potential of having some uh, Roaches in your army is nice. Because what if, for instance, what if this guy was actually going to go Hellion Mass, and what if he was just getting Blue Flame? Like that's a possibility. Uh, it's probably going to be tanks as we talked about, and it is tanks so far. But that's another reason why it's also a good idea to like maybe run a ling over to like the edge of his walls, the edge of his ramp. Don't run into a bunker and die, but just poke him and run away and see if a tank shoots you. And that's the, the oh well, cool, a tank shot my zergling. Now I know he's going tanks. Like it, you just you know that he's being more turtly when he does this kind of shit, so you can make more drones. So I'd love it if you made like those four lings that just went in and scouted. Instead of the lings doing that, I would have loved it if like a ling sat out here, a ling maybe sat right there, a ling sat like right there. And because you saw the tech lab on the, on the factory with your overlord, maybe have a ling poke around, the fourth ling poke around. Don't let it die to the bunker, but see if a tank shoots it. That's what I would have wanted you to do. Reading his build really is what we're talking about. Uh, and your overlord earlier, if you would have fixed your gas properly and your overlord earlier could have easily scouted that he had a natural. Because your overlord was like sitting right here already and there was only one marine. Your overlord, all it would have had to have done is move like this far, right there, and then turn around, and the marine would not have killed it. And you would have saw the natural. Just to confirm it's there. Also, another thing you could have done is had a second overlord up here, and you could have like moved down to like right there, confirmed it, and then moved back into the air. That's another thing you could have done. And you definitely need to have multiple overlords around your opponent's base if you don't get overlord speed. I like that you have one over here. I like that you have one over here, but I think this overlord, instead of flying in this way and like sitting, parking it right there, I would love it if, so if it's going to park it here, that's actually fine because you can see vision. But if your plan is to park it here, I would love it if your overlord also kind of went over here because this is a lot of information because it tells you if he's taking gas. This is good because you can maybe see his tech at some point, but this is huge because you've confirmed he's expanded and now you want to know how early he takes his gas. And the faster he takes his gas, the less likely he's going bio. And let's look at his base really fast. He still hasn't taken his gas yet. He is going for a third command center. So bio and third CC are the same thing. They're both mineral heavy. Uh, and he is going tank Hellion right now. But if this guy was rushing his gas, you could be like, maybe he's going for some starport timing or like, uh, you know, crazy amounts of cyclones or some shit. But all overall, so far, your macro is fine. Uh, you made it. How many roaches do you have? You have seven roaches. I like it. You're making drones again. Your 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 build is not bad. You're hitting. Uh, you're making another ten drones right now, and you're already at fifty six drones at around five thirty. That's not bad. For us, especially since you opened up speed as well. That's not bad. You're on par for good macro right now. You're going to be fully saturated before six minutes, while opening with speed, which is good. And now your production. The only thing I don't like that you're not doing is you're not scouting shit now. Like, you've seen this, but this could be multiple things. And I don't think that necessarily you just die. But, for instance, for instance, what if this guy would have actually made, like, one tank off of this tech lab, and then he rotates a starport onto it? Like, what if the barracks up here was uh, making a reactor like it did, and he made a starport next to it, and he made one tank? And then as soon as he made one tank, he lifts off all of his buildings and he rotates the starport to the tech lab. He rotates the factory to the reactor and the barracks just sits there doing nothing now. And then he makes a battlecruiser in Hellions. And he has one tank that sits here and like, you know, guards his base. And then he just goes for this really fast battlecruiser warping into your base uh, with Hellions that like hit a different base or something like that. That could be a problem for you. If you don't scout it. And that also could hit you at like right around like 6 to 6.30. And then you have the queen wise. How many queens do you have? You have four queens. And you have one per base and you have one in, one creep spreader. And you have no spore. 
I'm not saying you need to build blind spores, and I'm not saying you need to build mass queens. I think mass queens is the better option if you do one of those, though. Mass queens is actually really nice. Because, uh, like, if we're talking, if you had, like, eight queens right now, you could have more creep spread. And it also would help you with if, if this guy did go for BC. But what I want you to do is I want you to have a little bit more of emphasis to, like, try and scout something. Like, you haven't scouted shit since your first overlord went in and left. And you're playing really blind right now. Your creep is all right. It's it's as good as it could be, with, or it could be a little bit better, but it's still relatively good. I give you your, your creep spread a B so far for having only one queen to spread it. Uh, every, it's, you're going into a fucking C right now, though. Okay, uh, C plus. You finally did it. <laughs> and you're going lurkers, blindly. Don't know if I like this. I don't actually like this at all, by the way. Uh. Like, I don't know if I like this if I didn't know what Terran was doing. But you should kind of assume, again, how we talked about. He's most likely not going to use the factor for anti-air now. Because why the fuck does he have an engineering bay this fast? Which means, what's what's something that you make out of a tech lab that does not shoot air units? It's a siege tank. He's not going to make Thors. And he's probably not going to make uh, uh, Cyclones if he makes an engineering bay as his factory is, like, finishing. Like, if this engineering bay is built... After he's at a factor for two minutes, like if this was built instead of at like, what was it built? Like three and a half minutes. If it was built at like four and a half to like five minutes, totally different story. But he built this engineering bay, like when he only had like two SCVs in the middle line at his natural. That was like before the tech lab was done on his, on his factory. Which means his first unit he's going to build is, is going to guaranteed be a tank, not a cyclone. It's very likely. It's it's very like there's why the hell would he make a cyclone and an and engineering bay? It doesn't make any sense. So if he's gonna make tanks, my point I'm trying to make here is his lurkers suck against tanks. So you're kind of countering yourself right now. The only way lurkers start beating tanks is as soon as you add in viper. And now you've confirmed. I like that you attempted to scout, finally. It's eight minutes, though. I, like, you're, you droned? I'll say this. You still got... And you're going Viper. You still got to a good point in this game, but you did it by flipping a coin. You had no idea what he was doing. Your creep spread is like... A, I'll give it a B again. It's like a... It's like a, B, a, a C plus to B minus. You're... Uh, it could be better. A little bit better. Um... Your scouting is like a fucking is like a D D minus. It's not an F, but it's like a fucking D. Because you did scout, you gave yourself the tools to read what he did, but you didn't actually follow up at that on that at all. And you've gone into a lurker opener. And if this dude would have done a tank timing to you, or like a hellion timing to you, or let's say he did hellion harassment to you, and then he went into a tank timing, and you go into lurkers. There's a chance you could have totally died to this kind of a player. Like, there's holes in your build is what I'm trying to say. It's risky. Um, it, yeah. It's just like no scout greed is essentially what it is. Yo, uh, Emu, or, uh, damn it, Carl. Thank you very much, man, for the two-month resub. Much love, man. Much appreciated. But we're at this point now. So, again, all I can say is uh, just really scout more. Poke in his base a little bit. Maybe as soon as your layer is done, make a fucking overseer. Because you do get a layer relatively early with this. You get a layer by about, like, six minutes. You could have made an overseer with your one of your overlords chilling. And you could have just went through his base with the changeling and the overseer. And you could have got so much of a better read. And then... Uh, like, what you're doing right now, where you're going Hydra, Viper, Lurker, it wouldn't be as gambly. Because, let me give you a for instance, okay? If you're going Hydra Lurker, it's fucking shitty against tanks. But if you make Viper, suddenly tanks are way more manageable because Vipers can counter tanks. However, what if this guy was actually going Battlecruisers? Or something like that, and you're investing shitloads of gas into Vipers and Lurkers, which are going to do, honestly, nothing to Battlecruisers. And you're like, shit, he's got like 5 BCs and I only have 11 Hydras. When if I was going to go Hydras, I should actually have like 32 or something, or like 35 instead. Like, I should have so many more Hydras instead of Lurker, Viper. Each Lurker is worth four Hydras. Sorry, each Viper is worth four Hydras, and each Lurker is worth three Hydras. And you have the equivalent 
of 15 Hydras and Lurkers and 8 Hydras and Viper. So you have 23 potential Hydras that you're not using, which would have put you at 34. And if he was going BCs, you'd be fucked. <laughs> if he was going BCs, though, and you had 34 Hydras, you'd be fine. <laughs> you need to scout more. It's so risky how you're playing. <laughs> your economy is good, though. Uh, your your economy is good. Your development is good, but your macro is um, could use some work. I like that you're trying to fix it by taking gases uh, eight, nine, or uh, sorry, um, nine and ten, and eleven and twelve at your uh, fifth and sixth bases. I like that. That's important. I want you to definitely saturate them as soon as you can too. On top of that. Um, but here's, here's, a, an idea. Okay. You got Zergling speed, which is great. If you're going to run into a situation where you're going to go for a Viper Hydra Lurker timing and you're going to be going for upgrades, you're going to be, you're going to be, exp you're going to be like really just stretching your gas super thin, super thin gas stretch. And you're like, I, I can't really afford shit. Look at your larva right now. You just, you just had 29 larva. You have 15 sitting on the hatcheries. And you have 14 Hydras sitting there, is, or being started right now. An idea, and you also had a, a Viper that's almost... The, the Viper doesn't count, just kidding. It's, it's 28 seconds ago. For, forget the Viper. But you, had to, you did have 29 Larvae sitting on the hatcheries a second ago. An idea you could use, because if we, if we go back and kind of look at your larva, I guarantee you have lots of Larvae sitting there all the time when your gas is like being stretched really thin. Let's watch your, watch your Larva. Eight... You spent it all four, five, six. You spent some three, five, six, seven, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, ten, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Like at times like this, where you're like, shit, I have like a lot of minerals and not a lot of gas. I would love it if you actually did do more things like this. Like just make a lot more lings. And the reason why I want you to make a lot more lings is because it would be great if you try to do like counterattacks. Just something with your lings. Like imagine, and like imagine this, okay? Imagine if you spend 2,000 minerals on lings, which is a lot of minerals on lings, which you can afford easily right now because you are, your, your build is so gas expensive. It's not going to change how fast you can spend your gas if you spend 2,000 minerals on lings. But let's just say you spend 2,000 minerals on lings, and let's say that 2,000 minerals on lings equates to you killed two Hellions and three tanks, and that was it. Which is a bad trade for Zerg in terms of if we're talking about resources, because it's not like we're talking about maybe like a thousand resources for Terran goes away for two thousand resources of Zerg. That is a, a quote unquote bad trade for Zerg. But at the same time, it's actually a good trade for your playstyle because your playstyle is limited on gas anyways. So more lings, utilizing more larva early would be better for you because it will allow you to actually maximize your larva better. Because your larva is capping out on your hatcheries right now. So you're generating none anyways. And it will allow you to actually maintain your minerals a little bit more. Like effectively. And it gives you the opportunity to not only maybe pop some of his units that are actually better than your lings. Like if you get rid of three tanks, that's fucking great. It makes your Hydro Lurker Viper timing even better. Because you have three less tanks to kill in the future. Um, when you do your real timing. But at the same time, if your opponent ever actually allows you to have a, w a window where it's like, oh shit, Terran's out of position, and you just got into his natural, and he just wiped out 15 SCVs, that could be game ending. It literally could just end the game if something like that happens. So I definitely want you to, to uh, and when you're develop if you're going to go for styles like Lurker, Hydra, Viper, I want you to use Lings more in the, in the developing stage when your gas is being split every which way, going into upgrades, going to upgrades, going into upgrades, going to upgrades, going to a hive tech, getting Viper going into Lurker, like you just don't have enough money. Or you don't have enough gas to spend it fucking anything. Like you're so stretched, so thin. You have one gas. <laughs> Literally one gas in the bank. <laughs> and like, you could have maxed out repeatedly over and over and over before this. Obviously it's going to be on Zerglings. I don't want you to do a, a Zergling Lurker timing on his base, but I, what I want you to actually do is I want you to use your Lings to try to set up fights. Imagine, imagine if you had your Lurker Hydra Viper in the middle of the map, 
and he had like 50 lings trying to do his natural. And you see, with like a changeling or something, or an overlord, or your zerglings just see a big ass army come back up his ramp into his natural, and he comes back to defend it. And you test the waters at his like third base, and you let you go, oh shit, he moved like every unit back to defend his natural because of these lings. How about I just go do a quick swipe on his third base? And then as soon as you, you do a swipe, you, let's say you kill a bunch of fucking, with your Lurker Hydro Viper, you kill a bunch of SCVs and you just maybe kill the Command Center, or you realize he's got some tanks over here and he sieges them and you just back out. You're like, oh, I'll just leave now. Like, I'm not saying you have to do that, but you could. You could do things like this. It could, you could use the links to set up multiple engagements. Multi-prong. What league is this? This is Diamond. This is also like the fifth time I've done a replay analysis for Muffins. He likes it when I get it. He likes it when I get rough. Um... In the information department. He doesn't like me to... To pussyfoot it. This is another thing we could have done. Uh, with your money. You have 7,000 minerals in the bank. Once you get to that stage where you're like, Alright, I'm going to be moving out. I'm going to be attacking. And you know... You should know... Again, with, this comes with scouting. Your opponent is going for a Hellion-based mech style. Like, it's lots of Hellions mixed in with something. It's Mech generally just has a lot of uh, Hellions, just in general. Uh, so it would have been a great time to be like, let's make some Spore, some Spine. Like, one Spore and two, maybe three Spines per base. Like, Spore, Spine, Spine, Spine. Spore, Spine, Spine, sp uh, Spine. Spore, Spine, Spine. Spore, Spine, Spine, Spine. Or two Spines would be fine. Uh, spore, Spine, Spine, Spine. You know what I mean? Just put some spore spine down. Like you know, you know this. I've told you this before. But you're 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 creating a situation where you're like, I'm gonna go attack him now. In a weird way, I'm gonna I'm gonna go attack him with an army that takes a lot more attention to detail. I need to micromanage my lurker and my viper, which is a definitely above diamond level strategy choice. And you're not doing it a proper setup before you do this. So you're creating, you're what you're doing with your micro is you're creating like 10 more problems for yourself because you're like, instead of just A-moving his ass and throwing down like one or two blending clouds and that's that's just what you're microing. Instead, what you're doing is you're trying to micromanage fog of war pressure because now if you run too far into fog of war, which you don't know what's out there, you could be like, oh shit, there could be like five tanks. I don't want to run into five tanks. I can be careful about this. But you do want to run into a single tank. So you're trying to, you're try but you're, you also don't want to run into like Thors or Vikings and lose your Viper. So you're trying to like inch forward and play it really meticulous, meticulously and cautiously with your units, which is making you play really fucking slow and tons of attention is going right here, right now on this screen right here. What meanwhile, you're casting your spells with your Viper, you're making sure your, your units don't overcommit to die and you're leapfrogging your lurkers forward. It's a lot of attention is required here. This is definitely above diamond for composition. Uh, just throwing it out there. And it, I would agree with what you're doing a little bit more had you set up your base a bit more properly before committing to this. Because now you have like 10 problems you've created for yourself over here with your engagement style choice. And now there's like another problem happening over here. This is like, oh shit, now I have to fix drones. Now I have to worry about something getting, dealing with the counterattack. I have to also watch the minimap and see where it goes. What if it splits and forks off? That creates more new problems. I have to look over there. I have to look over here. I also have to think about what I'm going to make now to replace, do I want to actually make drones or do I want to actually make uh, units to replace this because I'm going to be, am I going to be undersaturated? How many drones do I have? You have 107. So losing some drones is actually not the end of the world for you. But this is creating a problem for you. And you're choosing to kind of ignore it and neglect it for the most part. Like it killed your entire base. And now he's got a Hellion going over here. You do have a couple of riches going to deal with that. But you let the entire base die. So, not ideal, right? And now there's more Hellions. And another base dies. This is not ideal. Like, you're taking way too much fucking damage against this. Basically, this dude's playing fucking Star Wars, and he's finding the whole, like, the, there's a fucking, the Death Star has a fault. If you shoot a missile right in the vent, it'll the whole thing blows up. You're you're doing the Death Star Zerg build. Like you have there's no reason why this should work. 
If I can just make a spine. <laughs> oh my god, it's happening again. <laughs> And you know why this is happening? It's because you are like this one's gonna be fine. Okay, this one's gonna this one's gonna be fine because you left roaches here, and now roaches could even leave now, and it would still be fine because now spines are done, and now you're doing way too fucking mini spines. Two to three is all you need. Ten is. Ten is like basically saying there's a spider in the other room. Get the fucking machine gun. Okay, get the get the flamethrower. Let's actually just put a bomb in there and let's leave this house and explode the entire house. We'll, we'll buy another place. Like, it's overkill, dude. You don't need this many spots. You don't need this many spots for one base, okay? Two to three. <laughs> it's just Hellions. <laughs> this is more appropriate when you're fighting against, like, charge lots. It's more, it's more, <laughs> it's more appropriate for charge lots. It's not super appropriate for hell bats and hellions. And now look at your army, right? So, look, so we're talking about your base and why this is a big problem. It's because, again, it goes back to the same logic I just talked about. You moved out and set up a pro like a fight where it's so fucking meticulous. You have to stare at this fucking area, and you did this before you made Static D the first time. And now that you've gone back and made Static D, you've kind of freaked out and you're like, fucking 12 spines, bitch. <laughs> 10 spines, what do you think about that? <laughs> like it's, it's fucking overkill, dude. Uh, but you've stopped doing your push now because you're trying to fix your base now. It's just out of order. And now look what happens to you in your push. Now, this Terran player is actually scanning you and he and he's this is minimal effort for Terran. He just goes like this. He literally goes like this. Alright, uh let's get like six Hellions. Green box them. Let's just pretend I have six Hellions, okay? He goes like this. Right click, shift, hellbat. That's all he does. He doesn't give a fuck. He just right clicks your fucking base and he goes shift hellbat. So what the Hellions will do is they'll be like, alright, so guys, we're gonna drive over there and then we're gonna turn into Hellbats. And just fucking kill everything. Whatever's there. That's all he's... Like, he doesn't even look at it. He doesn't even have to look at it again. That's just... That's literally how he's microing that. And you, on the other hand, is, are having to deal with it in so many different ways where it's just like, God, it's all falling apart. So... You know, like, now, this is... He's doing minimal effort to create maximum problems for you. And you're doing maximum effort to create minimum problems for him because you're having to deal with this shit while this is doing nothing. Because you haven't su successfully set it up properly. And now if we look at what's happening. This is just going to be you getting picked apart now. By snipes. By tanks pushing you. By EMPs on your vipers. By whatever. So look. You, you move forward. You move forward blindly. This is something we talked about, right? You have no idea what's out there. But you move forward blindly. And what happens is you move forward into like four snipes. And a bunch of tanks that just shoot the shit out of you. And you move back. Because you're like, well... That was a bad idea. So what you need to do to fix this kind of shit is you need to be constantly dropping like changelings with this kind of a style and you need to have some type of a fucking vision read on where he is. Like this is why this is advanced. This is not diamond level strategy choice. You need to see what you're going to do before you deal with it. Creep gives you that. Changelings give you that. Overlords give you that. Overseers give you that. Some, some form of a scout. Zerglings give you that. Uh, you need to just have an idea where shit is because now you know where shit is. And now would be a time to be like, okay, let's abduct this. And then I can easily abduct this and kill it because these tanks are way over there. But it, but things that are not your hydras could have given you that information. You know what I mean? So then you back up and you just, you just, you're like, ah, fuck it, I'm out of here. Which I agree with. You should definitely get out of there at this point. Um, but it's it's a failure at this point, right? It's all your, all, the only game plan you're having now is trying to recover your base. Like, ah, well, we have a lot of problems. And now, look what happens here. He, he shows up with when you have spines. And you have half your spines not even helping. This is why I'm saying this is overkill. A lot of your spines aren't even doing anything anyways. They're way out of range. 
But you're crushing this because you have spines now. And imagine if you didn't have to look at those hell hellbats ever, or hellions ever, because you had spines in the first place, and you could have, and then you could have actually micromanaged your. Because uh, let, let me actually explain something to you. Let me explain something to you. This is this is very logical, and I I bet a lot of people don't think about shit like this. Like this is this is like the Twitch chat GM comment, okay? Where uh, people, I feel like people don't think about games like this. So, right now, in this part of the game, this dude, you you have Vipers, you have Lurkers, you have Hydras. You could actually maximize your pushes right now if you had Static D. If you just had Static D, you have a Supply Lead. If you have Static D, Hellions right, drive around the map and do nothing to you. They just die. But you could kill this guy, and if you had Static D, this guy would just die. Because because of the economy setup that has put you in this position, I I think it's a risky fucking way you did it. You didn't scout anything, but it's actually a good position. You could totally fuck this guy up right now, and it would be that position where if this guy if this terror player was streaming and he died, his Twitch chat would be like, "Do, do you think you should make liberators or, or ghosts next time?" And he's like, "A fucking cat, dude. Okay, I got out macroed. That's just how the game fucking works." Okay, I can't make units that I don't have the access to make them already. I would have needed to make them before. I wouldn't need to have known he's going for a lurker timing. Shit like that. But Twitch chat's just like, no, you, next time, make ghosts. And it's like, fuck, I know I should make ghosts, or I know I should make liberators, or something to deal with this better. But, sorry guys, I can't. If uh, if time is limited. But, okay, because look, he has, he has no fucking liberators. He has no ghosts. He just has tanks, and he just has hel uh, a couple hellions. And he just has a couple Thors. That's it. Blinding, like, Vipers can counter this composition with your current style. That's all, uh, easily. Uh, Liberators zone out your Lurkers really well, which forces Vipers to also spend energy on Abducts. And Ghosts can EMP the Liberator, or, Ghosts can EMP the Viper. They can snipe the Viper. They can snipe your Lurker. They can do lots of things. Like, Ghost and Liberator can counter what you're doing now. A lot better. Um... But look at how delayed your timing gets. Again, he has no Liberator and he has no Ghost. But because of Hellions doing counterattacks, well, times eight this shit. You're like, at 10 minutes, you could be doing a timing right now. He still has nothing. You're starting to, you just killed all of his Thors in a tank. That was good. You killed the two more tanks. That's good. This guy is getting picked apart. But so are you because you're not preparing for this, right? And now your timing just sits here, and sits here, and sits here, and sits here. And you do kill a couple tanks periodically as he tries to push forward and siege you. But you just sit here, and 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 sit here. And you were here at 10 minutes, and sit here, and sit here. And now finally you leave around just under 15 minutes, which means you've sat here for almost 5 minutes. And you've allowed him to switch into a composition that deals with it way better. And this, this, you would not have to sit there for five minutes if you didn't have to go, fucking hell, bats, dude. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make that static D. <laughs> Yo, uh, Biggity Balls, thank you very much for the uh, two month resub, or the three month resub. Welcome back, dude. Welcome back. And now you're going for more timings, but you're doing these timings blind as fuck every time. So, because you're just walking into fog of war, like, oh, fuck it. All I can say is with play styles like this, you should never, like, if you were in the movie Tomb Raider, you would be the guy who goes, don't worry, guys, I got this. You walk into the fucking door and your head just gets smashed by two bricks. And they're like, guys, don't go in there. Muffin just said he's got it and he's dead already. Okay, you gotta fucking scout a little bit. I don't agree with Mass Lurkers here. He's got a lot of tanks and he's got Ghost. He's actually counting your composition now, so. Uh, lurkers are not gonna do the job for you anymore. The only way Lurkers are gonna work in this stage is if you multi-prong them. And multi-prong, not only are Lurkers already kind of uh, advanced maneuver, basically, 
but doing them multi-prong as well is even more advanced. That's we're, we're going from like, you have to at least be like masters for this now to now we have to be like a pro gamer or at least like high GM. So multi-prong lurkers is the only way this is going to work. And if you're not going to do that and you're going to single, you're going to just single fight lurkers every time you're going to get owned over and over and over as we're going to probably witness. Uh, if the Terran's ever sieged up in position, you're going to get destroyed. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, yo, thank you for the sub as well. Shoo, 65. I appreciate the prime, dude. Thank you, thank you. So you're pushing in one engagement, as we talked about. This is what you should not be doing. I like that you're scouting at least, though, a little bit. With, like, you have a changeling over here. You have a changeling over here. You have a couple overlords there. That's They're, they're fine, but... This, if this dude moves in over here, that's perfect. If this guy moves in over here, that's great. You have a little bit of a scout here. I like that you're starting to scout with changelings. You need to do this. You need to have a read as where his army is. But now watch your army. Watch your army. And this guy's actually got mass ghost, which is kind of crazy. Uh, like, he's, that's something you have to micro as well. You might actually run banelings into this. That's possible. But we'll see. Let's just see what happens. So I know he's nuking you, and he just nuked over here, and he uh, he also is he nuked he canceled his nuke over here though. But what just happened there was you literally just killed like three tanks. I think there was like a tank here, a tank here, and maybe like a tank over here or some shit. And then you killed a planetary fortress. So you've killed three tanks and a PF, and you've lost about sixty or yeah, about roughly like sixty-five to seventy supply to do it. I don't know if you're exactly max when that happened. But you've lost a lot of supply. That was not worth it so far for you at all. And you've killed the gas. Also, this Terran player is not abusing uh, you as well as he could be. All this guy's got to do, by the way, is scan you and snipe you. That's all he's got to do. Like, literally, his ghosts were sitting right here. If he just scans you and snipes you, you're going to lose your shit pretty fast. Because you have no more Banes. You have no more Bane links, Which is the what I, what you needed to have. I like that you had Banes, at least. But you needed to have Banes to be able to deal with the ghost. And now you don't have those anymore. So he, there's nothing stopping him from just going, snipe, 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 snipe. But he's kind of just chilling. Because, again, this is Diamond League. And Ghost is also an advanced unit. And if this guy was GM, he would be fucking sniping you all day. But if this guy is Diamond, he's probably going to cloak his ghost and just fucking sit here. Because it's advanced. It's, it's, not, it's, it's an awkward unit to use. It's, it requires meticulous movements. And now he's finally abusing some snipes as you run away. And I would say that that fight was not worth it for you. And now, this game is being put into a stage. Like, you're, like, you are playing a game right now, Muffin. It's like saying this, okay? This is what you're, this is what you're doing. If I were to coach you right now and say what you're doing is good, this is the kind of coach I would be. Let's, let's talk about weightlifting. Imagine you got a guy that's, like, skinny as fuck. Or, like, or really obese. And he's never really worked out ever. And he comes into the gym, and he's it's day one, and he's like, all right, uh, I want to work out. I need a personal trainer. Can you help me? And then you're that guy. You're like, yeah, I'll help you. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to bench press, and I'm going to need you to bench press 450 pounds right now for me. Can you think you can do that? <laughs> he, he's like, I don't know. Let's try. He fucking lays down. Let's say it's a really skinny guy. He's got, like, toothpick arms. <laughs> he's like, I can't get it off the bar. And you're like, don't worry. I'll help you. You get like four fucking guys to come over. They all lift up the sides of the bar. And then the fucking toothpick arm guy's like, I think I'm ready. Everyone's like, all right, let go. <laughs> and that toothpick guy just gets fucking destroyed. That's what you're doing to yourself right now. Are you fucking kidding me? This is like a fucking pro level style game 
where you have to meticulously micro lurkers with multi prong and simultaneously control the map with creep, simultaneously deny nukes and ghosts. Like, what the fuck is this game? You guys are like, you guys are both like two diamonds turning this into a pro game where I'm not saying you're playing like pros. There's definitely lots of missed opportunities on both sides. But this game is so, like, if either one of you just played a standard game that a diamond player could handle, you would crush the other one. Like, really fucking hard, probably. I mean, it is it is a fun game. I will say this. Okay, so, diamond players, if, if your games do sometimes look like this, I can totally understand the merit of how it could be fun, though. Because this is, this is, like, a diamond's version of a, of a pro match you'd see in, like, WCS. And that could be, you know, it's, it's exciting to be like, holy fuck, I just nuked some shit and I just sniped a bunch of stuff. Or I just blinding clouded and abducted so much shit in my lurkers and multi-pronged him. I get it. It's fun. But just know that and if we're talking about actual analysis of, like, skill, this is awful for you to play like this. Because you're never going to do it right at this stage. Let me give you some ideas on how you need to be doing this. See this overlord over here? This overlord needs to be like making a nidus worm right there. You need to be having like, let's say, like four lurkers and like 25 or like 30 zerglings in this. Four lurkers go like right here. They burrow all like right here. They kill shit that comes up the ramp and they kill the base in the meanwhile whenever nothing's coming up the ramp. And a bunch of lings kill his base. Meanwhile, you also have like eight lurkers on this side with a bunch of hydras and vipers. And you, sh you get his attention in his main and you shove over here with blinding cloud, abduct, lurker. You siege out planetaries and stuff like that. Like you just, or there's no base here, so we'd go to the next one. You blinding cloud these, move down, kill those. You could abduct that tank, kill it. There's no planetary here, so you could move, just shove in, pop these bases. You could actually burrow lurkers on the low ground here and then give a vision with an overlord with high ground. You could simultaneously maybe have like some hydro viper over here while you push this base. And you could like abduct tanks on the outside into your, into your boys. You could make a nidus here and here and you could rotate lurkers here, like you'd have lurkers here killing these mineral lines he comes over to defend it you up burrow you fucking run into the nidus you pop out of the nidus you go over here you siege this like you need to fucking do so much more with your units playing this way and if you d if you just fucking sit there in your base it's ne like you're just gonna be like well Terran is fucking impossible to kill <laughs> because planetary turret sensor tower is way fucking easier then lurk or multi prong. <laughs> also, here's a, a good idea too. A tip. This is a tip for any Zerg player out there. If you're getting nuked constantly, just know that the Terran player most likely is going like this. Like, where's his rally point for his barracks? Uh, it's like, it's like right there. So, where are, uh, so okay, we'll just go to his ghost. I just want to know where his ghosts are. What this Terran player is doing is he's literally doing this. He's going like this. Right click, shift, or like he goes like this. Right click, shift, cloak. Right click, shift, nuke. Like, so he like this. Uh, click, click again. I'll say it again. Clicks the ghost. Move command, hold shift, cloak. It tells the ghost I'm going to move there and then cloak when I get there. And then he's still holding shift, and he goes, right click, nuke, base. And then he, that's it. So the ghost will be cloaked, and then it'll nuke the base as far away as it can. And then he clicks another ghost. Right click, shift, cloak, right click, shift, nuke, base. New ghost. Right click, shift, cloak, right click, nuke, base. Right, right click, goes over and over and over and over. That's that's how he's microing this. He is not going like, okay, ghost, I need you to be in group 7. You in? Group eight, you're in group nine, you're in group zero, and he's like double tapping, like, okay, uh, move, okay, uh, dodge a spine, okay, dodge a sport, okay, uh, dodge that cloak, okay, there's an overseer, dodge it like fucking snake in Metal Gear Solid, okay, dodge this one, okay, there's a, oh, he's over here, okay, wait on it, wait on it, wait on it, okay, move, okay, now this one on the right, okay, dodge it again, okay, we can nuke there, okay, I can set up a nuke here, and I can set up a nuke here. He's not microing fucking anything, okay, that's not what he's doing. He is doing the first thing I said, and the way you abuse people who do that shit is you look at your choke points that are entrances to your base and you just make spore, spine, spine, spore, spine, spine. So like literally a spore and like two spines. Spore, two spines. Spore, two spines. Spore, two spines. 
or you could even do it like right there. You could do another one right here. Like this one's a bit wider though, so you could go sport two spine, sport two spine, and then like over here, sport two spine. You just make two spines and a spore, and every time a ghost tries to walk past two spines and the spore detects it, spines go poke, 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 ghost dead, poke, poke. Poke ghost dead. It takes two spines, three hits to kill a ghost. If he has even one level of armor. And he has no armor, so it would take two hits to kill a ghost then. Because the spines do 25, 25. And if you have 50, if you have two of them, 50, 50. So if he has one armor, it'll do 49, you know, 98. It won't actually kill it. It will take three hits to kill it. But a, it will, a spine will still kill a ghost in three hits. It's totally fine. But if he's shift nuking your hatcheries and your static D is forward and choke points, it changes things up for him and he's going to have to start now... He's going to have to now start actually nuking your outer static D lines. And why is this so good, Vibe? Like, Vibe, why does this make sense? Blow my fucking mind right now. Why is this a good thing to do? Do you know how hard it is to see a nuke when it could be in your mineral lines, on top of your gas, behind your gas, behind your hatchery, on your hatchery, in your mineral lines? You're looking, like, your eyeballs are like, shit, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? And there's so much fluttering shit, mining minerals, and you're like, okay, I, uh, where, where could it be? It's way harder to notice a nuke when it's in the middle of your mineral line. Like, you still could. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's harder to notice. However, if you notice a red dot in the middle of your creep outside where your spore spine is, that's super obvious. You can easily spot it. You're like, I see it right immediately. I see a red dot in the middle of nowhere. It, it's like a fucking giraffe standing in the middle of low grass. Like, oh. Do you see it? Am I hidden? But when, when their ghosts are allowed, and also here's the other thing too. That's one reason. It's easy to see. The second reason is because if you actually put Spore Spine in front of your base, he doesn't have the ability then to walk in your fucking base. He doesn't have the ability to walk in your base because when he walks in your base, suddenly you're like, I'm getting nuked. Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? You're like going through a fucking Rolodex of Zerg bases. Is it here? 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 Ah, uh, I don't know. Let's see if you spot these nukes. No. No. And to be fair, there's a lot of places it could be. Like, I, you're, you're starting to do it. You're starting to do it. I like that you're starting to do it. Okay? I like that. I like that. But do more of that. Like... There, 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 and there. And your whole base is covered. Like, everything below this, all this area, this whole, like, bottom 40% of the map is covered now. And then it's so much easier to deal with. Like, these nukes are just going to rip you apart over and over. And the reason why that this is not happening properly is because uh, you are still making an effort here to be like, I'm going to micro my lurkers. And you're not doing it properly because you're microing in one fight at a time, which is really easy for him to just put his ghosts here, put his tanks here, and be like, hey, lurkers. Watch, just watch Terry's perspective for a second. You have to multi-prong lurkers for them to work against this. All Terran's doing is going, like, this is, the, this is the game, this is the difference between the two players. The Terran's going like this. Is he in my sensor towers? No, he hasn't tripped the wire yet. He's not within sensor tower range. Nuke. 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 Oh, we need more nukes. Make them. Make nukes. Okay, we got nukes. Okay, let's nuke again. Oh, wait, there he is. Okay, ghosts, run over there and siege my tanks. Sit here and do nothing <laughs> until Zerg kills himself. <laughs> and here's the Zerg. Fucking nukes! God! I don't know where they are! Jesus Christ, my bases are dying! Fucking all in! I don't know. Jesus. Like, every time I attack him, I just get shot by tanks and sniped. And then every time I don't attack, my base is getting nuked everywhere. Oh, nukes again. Three more nukes. I don't know where they are. You're just like, you're just like, where are they? 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 And he's over there. Nuke. Nuke. And I'll nuke him again. Like, he doesn't... Like, the, the game is so much different. 
in terms of how much effort you guys have to put in. Like, his effort is so minor compared to what you're doing. He's just ripping your base out, apart from inside out. Like, everything's on fire. Fucking everywhere. Your, your vipers are like, this base isn't on fire, let's suck the life out of it until it is. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. You see that? Look how easy that red dot is to spot. Can you guys see that fucking dot? Tell me you see that dot. There's a nuke being cast right now at his outer static D wall. He is starting to do it. Look how easy that is. It's like, oh, look at that red on purple. It's not even like, it's like almost like gray. Pre Creep isn't actually exactly fully purple. It's like grayish purple. It's a, and it's a very bright red dot. It's very obvious to spot that nuke dot. And when this happens, if you had your whole base covered when a nuke happens, instead of having to look all around your base, it's like literally, you just go like this. Which one of my static D walls is it at? Oh, there it is. And as soon as you see it, you just go like this. Green box, up burrow, run away. If you can't kill it in time. And then you run back, reroute it on the creep, and then send a queen to like, or an overlord, to either shit creep with an overlord, or a queen to go put a uh, tumor there. Because your creep dies as well when the nuke hits. If you can do that. And if you can't do that, then just put your spine spore back a little bit further with your next tumor. Like here. You would still have creep that's there. You could still replant your spine spore. And you fix it. And it's so much easier to deal with nukes then. And then if you really want to, you can start doing things like, how about I leave like 10 zerglings here? And how about I leave like 10 zerglings on this side? And if I see a nuke on the left side, I send 10 lings to go kill that ghost. If I see a nuke on the right side, I send 10 lings to go kill that ghost or kill that ghost. And suddenly you have a few, just a few links that can just go over there and be like, bye, and go back to mining. You know, don't have to uproot anything. You know what I mean? Okay, we're going look to... How, look how easy that is to spot. Like, I'm actually... I tell you what, guys. I'm not cheating, okay? I'm not cheating. I am not going to look at the minimap. I am not going to look at the minimap. I am actually going to look at Muffin's vision. And the next time I hear a nuke, I'm physically going to try to find it. Okay, this is really hard to not look at the minimap. I... Let's do it again. I'm going to try to find it. While we want to, once I hear a nuke, I'm going to try not to look at the minimap. I'm really hard trying to look at the middle of the screen. <laughs> Cover with your hand. Okay. My fist is covering the minimap right now. On the monitor. See if he gets nuked again. And I can totally understand why Muffin Maestro's macro is, su is suffering so badly. Because, uh... This style requires, like, 300 APM to play. Like, look at this. Look at this APM difference. Look at the Terran. This is exactly what I mean. Zerg's freaking out constantly. Terran's like, nuke. Nuke. And I just heard a nuke. Now I paused it. I haven't looked at the minimap, guys. Now I'm going to look through his base really fast. And let's find it. Let's just see. Okay, it couldn't be here because of static D. It could be anywhere here. I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. Go to his... Okay, I can't click the, mini I can't click the minimap, so this is awkward now. Don't see it. Don't see it. I hear it. There it is. It's really hard to actually click... I'm going to move my hand now. It's really hard to move my screen properly if I can't click the mini map. <laughs> but like, you see what I mean? Like this eliminates, this static D eliminates the ghost being here. This static D not existing means that the ghost could literally run in anywhere in here. It could run down. There's no static D. And like, again, this is an opening to our base. It could be anywhere in here. It could be up the ramp. It could be anywhere in here. It could be, because this is open, it just one opening is all it takes. It could now also be anywhere. There's no stat. There's no uh, spore here. It could be anywhere over here. It could be anywhere in this area. It could be anywhere up here. It could be anywhere over here. There's no spore. It could not be in here because there is spore and spine. So it can't be here. And it can't be here. It could be anywhere else though. Which is why this is so hard to look for. Because you're giving yourself like... It's like instead of only having to deal with like four or five entrances of like looking at doors of your base... You have to look throughout your entire base. It's like, basically you're comparing like 5% surface area on the map to scout and check for, for nukes. And you're turning that into 
Now you have to check 50% of the map to find the nuke. Or like more, if, because we're zoning out this base and this base, it's more like 35% of the map. It just becomes way harder. And you had the means to do it earlier. You had this. You had such control of this game earlier. But once you get to this stage, if you ever get to this stage, okay, where you're just getting nuked, your base is in tatters, your creep spread's fucked, your half your bases are dead. Like, once it looks like this, it's this now again is it's not a situation that's like this is where Zerg should be. This is now a situation that's like, well, how are we gonna fix this problem, basically? Okay. Like, it's, it's no longer, like, it's appropriate. Now it's like a problem has already happened. Let's fix it. You basically flushed the toilet, and it flooded the entire upstairs. And now how are you going to fix that? That's, the plan is not to flood the upstairs. And it's just trickling down all the stairs in the rest of your house. You're like, fuck, we got to fix this quick. No, 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 no. It's not supposed to happen. But it did. Because you didn't prepare properly. Put a fan on it. Yeah, you're just you're constantly having to you're pushing into fog of war, and you're fighting this with one army at a time. You cannot play this style this way. Like I'm gonna keep repeating myself throughout the rest of this game. Uh, I've already kind of explained how to do it. Like Nidus multi prong would be one way. Just two different armies that are able to force an over a commitment to one side and pick apart the opposite. You have to do that with this kind of a style at this stage when your opponent has a proper counter. Otherwise, if you fight one army at a time, you're never going to win. Like, sure, you abduct one tank and one Thor and two tanks. But look at the supply. You just constantly keep getting just pounded in the meantime. Like, you're losing supply as well while you take these fights. And you're always you're always moving in fog of war. If this player was good with his ghost, he would abuse that all day. Like he has scan, he can see you doing this. Like he could just EMP you and snipe you. He's kind of doing it a little bit here and there, but he's really not doing a lot. And here's a here's a for instance, okay? If this Terran player ever paid attention to your overseers and saw your overseers ever at any point in time overcommitted. If he snipes your overseers and then walks into your army with a scan and snipes all of your expensive units, he could also do that. And he could kill all of your expensive units. Easy. It's like, look at the macro. When you take fights like this, you're, you're APMing so hard, but you're not actually doing anything, though. I just don't rec- I don't honestly do Muffin. I know you like to do your own thing, which is fine, but I think the style is awful to, to replicate. If you're not someone who's like already like Masters 1 or above, you're going to struggle to execute this kind of a style really badly. Like, it's... This is super advanced. But I mean, if you want to keep playing this way, you can. Just know everything I've talked about is how you have to play it. And if you can't physically do that, you'll never win then. Because you got to realize, you're the one being forced. You're, you, the, the reason why this is bad for you is because there's nothing you can do to force Terran to attack you the way you're playing this game. What's happening instead is you're getting nuked over and over and over, and Terran is, is which is forcing you to attack Terran, and you're always attacking Terran from one angle at a time, and he always sees where you are, because he sees you with sensor towers before you actually get to his base, and then he scans you as soon as you go over it, just like what he just did right here. He actually scanned you because in his vision, on the mini map, or go back before he actually scanned, you go over the, the threshold of the sensor tower. So he's looking around. He actually sp okay. So he actually spots you with the scan before you go over it. But right now you're going over the threshold of a, of a sensor tower, anyways. The threshold is right there, and you're going over it.
your overseers are like all sitting over it. You can see these little white dots. They're kind of hard to see because of creep, but there's a white dot. There's a white dot. There's a white dot like right over here. These overseers are inside of it, and so are the hydras. So if Terran, you can see that Terran can see this. <laughs> you know it's actually funny if this turn player just microed it you would have just abducted him across the way because he nuked over here and he's actually out of range to attack the hatchery it would actually be funny if you abducted him far enough so that he could then auto attack and finish it off <laughs> I kind of hope just for comedy's sake that this guy <laughs> kills your hatchery right now because <laughs> you abducted him across <laughs> okay <laughs> Mineral field exhausted. Uh. But yeah, and it's the same thing again. You're being forced to take one fight at a time. This is always going to be good for Terran. Always. Multiple fights is how you break this. The only time, the only time you should ever take one fight at a time, is when the Terran economy doesn't exist. And every time you take a fight against Terran, his supply that goes down doesn't get replaced because he's broke. Because you don't actually let him have any mining bases. Or, like, the only base he has left is the only one mining base he has. That is when it's okay to do one fight at a time. But if the Terran has map, like, the control like this, where it's, like, the whole fucking map, fighting one at a time is a massive mistake. Because what's happening to you is just will happen to you every time. So, Ling Hydra Viper. To be honest, if you're Diamond League, I don't even recommend Vipers at all, almost ever. Vipers are actually units that need to be more meticulously used, and Diamond players don't have the ability to do that. If you're a Diamond player and you think you do, you need a reality check. Like, I'm not saying you don't know how to use a Viper, but what I am saying is is you cannot use a Viper and maintain everything else as efficiently as you could if you didn't use a Viper. Like, uh, a player who is in Masters or above can usually start handling more meticulous micro units and not let everything else kind of fall apart around it. What if they go mech then? Watch, honestly, go watch my uh, Bronze GM Diamond videos when I play Zerg. I, that will give you so much more answers than I can right now. There's like thousands of answers that you'll be, will be had there if you haven't seen those yet. I highly recommend you go watch those. Like, a lot of people who play StarCraft, they think they're forced to play a certain way. I do not think Muffin here thinks he was forced to play this way. I think he just wanted to. And I don't recommend he keeps doing it for now because, like I said before, he's making the game way more difficult than it has to be. Here's another analogy or an example, okay? Imagine. Imagine that nobody knows who goes into a room. It's, it's, it's anonymous, okay? No one knows who goes into the room. And all they know is if you fail or pass. You go into the room and you either you fail or you pass. They send a fucking two-year-old in there and they say, touch the green block and the, the other's like he just touches the, he touches the green block and it's like holy fuck he did it and then he crawls out of the room and it's like he passed this guy passed and then they send a, a fully grown like 30 year old man in there and they're like solve two rubik's cubes at the same time you have five minutes and he's like trying to solve two with one hand each and he fails and they're like this guy fucking failed he failed the fucking two-year-old passed and he failed what an idiot That's what this game is. Why are you making it so hard? Holy fuck. This game doesn't have to be this complicated. <laughs> uh, 
everything I I don't have to say it again. Everything I've said multiple times throughout this game is why this lurker style didn't work. All of it combined. <laughs> Fucking chat, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> you guys make me laugh. It's so stupid. <laughs> you can't even breathe properly. Uh. <laughs> You guys made me, like, struggle to breathe there for a sec. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> okay, that's enough. That's enough, guys. We're good. We're good. Muffin, what the fuck was this replay? I love you, man. Uh, thank you for watching the replay analysis. <laughs> no, we're for real. Muffin, okay. M Muffin. You could keep playing this way if you want to. You just... You have to do everything I said, for sure. You have to... You're going to have to take this to the next level, dude. Because the way you're playing it right now is never going to work. It's never going to work. It's, you're make like the game, the way you're developing this game, this game has to be played at a much higher level than what is notoriously a diamond level. Like you've turned this game, the only way the Zerg is going to come out of a position that you're in is if you multi-prong and you do it effectively while simultaneously not losing anything in your base. Because that's the that's just the style you've given yourself, and we, we did not successfully do that. So that's what you have to do if you put yourself in this position again. Uh, if you are not capable of doing that, you're gonna lose every time the same way, just like this. Uh, it's so much easier for Terran to defend themselves against one one push of Lurker Hydra Viper. Uh, yeah. But this game, honestly, you could have you could have actually made this game not even turn into what it was by like minute twelve, if you, like, again, had Zedek D and you pushed before he had ghosts, and uh, anything else, like that. This whole problem could have been avoided. But this is so much easier for Terran at this stage than it is for Zerg. This is where this is like Terran's wet dream scenario, and this is Zerg's worst nightmare. When your base is fucking just getting repeatedly nuked and you're like, well, every time I engage, I run into sensor towers and I run into PFs and I die. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching. I hope, I hope th this was, uh, anyone who's like, God damn, vibes really hard in this guy. Yeah, he likes it when I'm uh, very, cr very critical on his gameplay. He requests it. Uh, so I, I hold nothing back and I, I really lay into him. Okay. That's why we did it. But if you guys liked it, yo, please uh, check out more. This has been a replay analysis. I have many more like this. I also have a lot of coaching lessons. Uh, check out more of them if you like them. But thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next one. Until then, have a great night. Have a great day. Peace, guys. Subscribe if you like the content. And goodbye. Peace.